Good morning everybody. It's Monday 22nd of June 2020 and this is Too Busy Monday. Actually it's going to be, the focus is really on a full title which is Too Busy Doing Nothing. So um, you might be wondering kind of what I meant by sort of too busy and the focus today is going to be on too busy doing nothing. But I am happy to announce that I've actually been very busy doing things close to my heart and I have finally finished um, writing and submitting the manuscripts for two books very close to my heart. The Weight of Emptiness, Comfort and Hope for the Loss of a Loved One and Resilience and Courage, the Key to Endurance. Publication, fingers crossed, mid to end of July. But don't worry, I will post when they are ready so you can order your signed copies. Now, another wee update. As it was a three-book deal, I'm in the process of writing the third book. And this focuses on the circle of life, but it's very different. It's made up of inspirational, motivational sayings by me and poems by a close, young, very talented friend, Danielle McGregor. And uh, I'm really looking forward to working with her, um, pushing her to the limits. But she's got a fabulous way of just bringing poems to light, I mean, on any topic. So look out for that one as well. So being busy, 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 doing lots, I started thinking more about are we really, or you, any of us, really too busy doing nothing in your life? Life can be very busy and usually too busy. And although it might seem like it's been less busy during this lockdown period, it's probably still very busy, but in very different ways for everyone. I mean, I, I, we've said it before, like we're all, we're not all in the same boat, we're all in the same storm, but we're in very different boats. And there's still anxiety um, around people going out. Uh, we've got different metre rules across the different countries in the whole of the UK. So there's an anxieties around for everybody. But there's also been, during this time, more focus on social media, Zoom calls, virtual team meetings, online schooling, that it might seem as if you're all on a treadmill of trying to keep up with everything every day. So I bet at the start of lockdown, you, like me, everybody thought, oh, I thought of all the things that I had never got round to doing and I now have time to do them. Yes? No? Well, it will vary from person to person. Some people, some of you might have thought, oh, there's plenty of time to start. Others probably threw themselves into this work with gusto. And then, well, then or now, maybe you never started. Maybe those who started might have now stopped, possibly even thinking, what's the point of it all? I definitely know that many people were feeling very down last week. I was as well. I think I talked about that. It was interesting. You felt as if it was, um, you know, a just in the air what is it but we were all sort of feeling down um so we're now in lockdown in some form of another we've been in that now for 12 i think nearly 13 weeks and i've been doing the live videos for 13 weeks since the 20th of march which seems like an eternity ago and thanks dave he's saying now I'll, well, I'll be so famous i won't be talking i won't be doing talking to you all no i'll always have time for my people um i love people and i love you all so i'll not forget you even if i have to record things so i won't forget you um the point of all this today is really to understand the meaning of being busy Many of us are busy, but are we being productive? So what are we doing? What's helping us to achieve our dreams and our vision? If you're working just now or working remotely, you may have attended to emails, you've done various tasks, but have you actually done anything of value? On the other hand, we have frontline workers. They've not had time to think of themselves. They've been busy, 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 and many too busy. Um, but they are being productive because they've been taking care of everything, of everyone, 
anything but themselves. So I think we really need to do the affirmation again. As a group, we must think about all of them. We thank you. Um, so when will life be back on course? Will it ever? Well, it'll certainly, I think, be very different. Frontline workers, they will need time to recover. But I was giving this quite a bit of thought. How will this be done? Every one of our frontline workers may or will suffer from things like PTSD. But they just can't take months off work. Or ever. What, what happens to them? They do need time to recover. So what kind of support will they get? All these have to be thought through. And I'm not sure whether... Um, it, it will. It needs to be effective, but what will happen? Um, I mean, I would love to weave a magic wand that helps everyone after this crisis is over, but I can't. All I can do is provide some tips and tools to help keep everyone as mentally healthy as possible in the circumstances. And which tips can be there? They're there always and certainly while anyone awaits professional support when it's available, because we know there'll be a, a, a huge demand for it and therefore will the waiting times be much longer and do we have enough people to support everyone who needs it? So what can we do to be more effective rather than too busy doing nothing? So here are some tips again and I hope you these tips are um, sinking in I sometimes seem like a broken record, I'm repeating them, but it's very important. So the first one is focus on things that matter. If you don't think about what you're doing, then you will create bad habits and stray away from the life that you really want to create for yourself. Of course, this tip, focus on what matters, is helpful, no matter whether there is a crisis or not. You should be doing this anyway. And you can think or should think about various areas of your life that you can focus on. How organised are you? Are you concerned about the environment? How healthy are your finances? How healthy are your relationships, not just with partners, with friends, with colleagues? And how do you manage your time? These questions are all about reflecting on yourself internally and externally. So how do you do that? And I'm back, my broken record again, but time and space. You need to think about your thoughts and your feelings. If you don't sort out what's happening within you, you can't possibly sort out what's happening externally in your life. It's a kind of vicious circle. So you need to be constantly kind of thinking internally, getting these feelings and thoughts um, sorted. Have you got your vision board, your aspiration board or your achievement board? Call it what you will. I've talked about this before. And of course, um, I've got mine. I have it close to hand. I can look at it. It's an excellent thing to have. It reminds you of your dreams, your goals, your vision, your mission in life. Now, just a word about the difference between goals and dreams or vision. Your goals about what you're trying to achieve um, sort of day to day, you kind of short, mid-term, long-term goals. But your dreams and vision are all about why. So your goals are what you want to achieve. Your dreams and visions are why. Why do you do, what, why do you want to do things in your life? It's important that if, when you want to be organised to have goals, but remember, we've talked about this before, goals have to be realistic. I mean, I think most of us, even we, we write great lists of what we're going to do, and lots of things are unrealistic. Well, don't beat yourself up about this. Just recognise that, well, these may be unrealistic, but stick to the realistic ones. And when you've achieved them, what do you do? You praise yourself. These are the ones you were meant to achieve. The world has changed so much over the last few months. I mean, it's time to look at what you want to do with your life. Think to yourself, if you could do whatever you want, what would that be? It's a time to take, I suppose, take a look at yourself and 
Look at who you really are. Remember, you have to recognise your abilities and talents and strengths. And that's sometimes difficult. Um, we've maybe been brought up that it's selfish to think about all of that. But it's very, very important to recognise we all have abilities. We all have talents and strengths. And of course, others can point these out. And if you are complimented, remember to accept these compliments. Don't make excuses, just thank you. So that's you being recognised and just make no excuses for being the person you are. It's also a time to identify opportunities. Now, while this can be overwhelming, you can use your affirmations to make the changes towards taking these opportunities. Know that you will be happy. I mean, it's time to take action. So recognise opportunities. And of course, turn challenges. Where life is challenging. Life throws challenges at us. And if you're flexible and adaptive, then recognise these challenges and turn them into opportunities. Because all the changes that are happening, it's probably raised fears. It's raised fears in everyone. So it's time to face the fears and take action. Encourage yourself. But you can also look to positive people. Get, ditch the negative negativity around you, the negative people. Get positive people around you. Um, you might have a mentor. I do mentoring for the chambers. And mentoring is different from coaching. Mentoring looks at the holistic personal development of someone, not just the goals. So you're wanting them to improve personal development on a day-to-day -day basis. And mentoring can help people through the process of facing their fears turning challenges into opportunities, <clears throat> getting them to question themselves. And of course, this is where I talk when I'm doing the mentoring, I talk about um, affirmations. They're really powerful. It's the power of the mind. Um, and you can say to yourself, just simple things, I have the ability to change. I can be creative. I am creative. I am innovative. And then do something new. Take action and look to your aspiration board, your inspiration board. And, you know, cast your eyes over the board. Have you travelled on your board? Have you done these things? Is there adventure ahead? And believe, believe, believe. On a practical note, of course, everything worthwhile takes time and effort. You need to keep doing the daily good habits. And that's why I kind of created the ABC. They're simple and very effective. But doing these simple things daily, they, you can make them a good habit. And this keeps you on track, not just for your goals, but for your dreams, for your end, the, just the dreams that you have in life. Um, there's uh, words of uh, um, Shel Silverstein, a children's poem. All those woulda, coulda, shouldas all ran away and hid from the one little did. One small step at a time, of course, that's all it takes. Don't take big leaps. Don't overwhelm yourself. If you work on doing things that relate to your dreams and vision and just these little steps, then you will achieve them. All the tips that help you achieve your dreams refer to doing them daily, not just my ABC, but read anything on the self-help books, all the, the power of the mind. They're all simple things, but you have to do them regularly. So if you do yoga, you will have heard the words like saying a mantra over and over in your head. This is what I want you to do with the ABC. These core techniques really um, do them every day, then you will go boldly forward no matter the challenges that life throws at you. The ABC and these kind of tips, these mantras, they help you to stick to your core values. Remember, successful people don't just end up where they are by luck. There can sometimes be a bit of luck there, but they build a meaningful life. They plan. They use tips. They use the mind. Their mindset is different. It's positive. And they use things like my ABC to create the life they want. And of course, everyone can get overwhelmed. We can all get overwhelmed. Even successful people 
even successful athletes. So how do we stop ourselves from be becoming or being overwhelmed? Well, again, a few more tips. Write down your realistic goals. Writing them reminds me, right, reminds me, reminds you of your purpose. And it makes things more concrete. You're actualizing them and that helps you think about what challenges might arise so you're ready for them and what these challenges they might affect your goals, the outcome of your goals, of your dreams. But when you recognise that they're there, this means you'll be ready to adapt, to be flexible, to be resilient. I've said it before, say it again, remove negative people, negative situations, anything that can come between you and your goals and dreams. When you spend time on things that stop you from achieving your goals, you're going to have less time and energy to focus on things that matter to you. So if you have set yourself a big goal, because some of us do, and you think, oh, that's, I'm just overwhelmed by it. Don't worry about it. Break it down into smaller steps that, so you can see each of these smaller steps. You're achieving them. Because if you don't do that, you will be overwhelmed and in fact might not even start. If something happens to change your plans, you'll also be able to adapt because you've broken it down into the smaller steps. So you'll be able to adapt and adjust so that you don't lose your motivation. Remember, change is part of life. And the more you can be adaptable and flexible and resilient, the more you will succeed in life. So stay focused on the big picture, your vision, your mission, your purpose in life. And that's where your affirmations can come in and your breathing. And staying focused, I've got a meditation here that can help you focus. Now the affirmations, my ABC, the A is for affirmations. Remember they are the three P's, P for personal, P for positive and P for past or present tense. Remember, athletes don't say, oh, well, I think I might win, win at the Olympics in 2000 or whatever. They visualise, they imagine themselves holding that uh, gold medal, holding the trophy. So you have to use the present or past tense. So an affirmation for today is, I focus on my vision. I know my purpose in life. And the B is for breathing. Remember the deep breathing. If you do yoga, singing, elocution, any voice production, you'll all know the breathing comes from the lower diaphragm because the deeper breathing means you're bringing energy, oxygen into the bloodstream. So you're breathing in through your nose, holding and down through the mouth. And then, of course, mind bites. What I thought we'd do today would be the candle flame. The candle flame is a meditation that helps you focus and uh, we, can go, <clears throat> we can go into that now by just remember your shoulders back, you want to be confident, your feet on the ground and of course <clears throat> just take a moment to settle yourself, feel yourself sinking kind of into the chair. If you're lying down that's good as well, you just feel grounded. And of course, today is grey up here in Glasgow, um, but uh, we can think of a, a bright things in our mind. And uh, on a better day, you might want to do meditations outside. Nothing better than being in nature to do these things. It's wonderful. So the candle flame meditation is very effective if you want or need to focus it helps because you're focusing on something physical in your imagination. And in this meditation I do, it's a candle flame. It helps soothe and calm you as well. And it helps your concentration. So if we just want to do that just now, um, you can find, uh, even although it's an imaginary, imaginary candle flame, sometimes I have done this exercise with a real candle flame. And uh, you can find when you're focusing on it, your eyes might kind of water. So you just you know, adjust your eyes. But this is an imaginary candle flame. So I want you to close your eyes, just sit comfortably. And close your eyes and just imagine you have a candle flame 
in front of you. I want you to look at the candle flame and take a slow, deep breath in through the nose. Hold and then out through the mouth. Take another slow, deep breath in through the nose. Hold and then exhale. You feel more relaxed with each breath. As you take a deep breath in this time, when you exhale, you feel stress leaving your body. Now look again at the candle flame. Let your eyes follow the movement of the creamy yellow outer flame. Let your eyes move inwards to the centre of the flame and let them rest there. Focus on this centre of the flame. You feel relaxed. Relax your eyes. See only the flame. If thoughts come into your mind, let them float by like clouds. Focus again on the flame. There is only one flame. You feel calm. You feel relaxed. Now you can say your affirmation, I am open to ideas that may come to me. I feel strong. I feel relaxed. I know I can focus and concentrate while remaining calm. Now take another deep breath in through the nose. Hold. And as you exhale, let all the tensions and stress leave your body and slowly open your eyes. Now you can just shake your shoulders, I would say shugal up here in Glasgow, shugal your shoulders, stretch your arms and yawn. But that's just, you'll feel calmer and relaxed. So anytime you want to feel focused, please try this meditation. Now thank you again for watching, I hope it's given you some things to think about and that you're probably all being very busy being productive. I'm sure you are. And just take care of yourselves. And I send virtual hugs to everybody. I know that you can give yourself a hug if you're alone, but enjoy today and I'll be back on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. As always, if you have a topic you want me to speak about, please private message me or post on Facebook and I'll be happy to see if I can bring some information to whatever you want me to talk about. Have a great day. Virtual hugs to everybody. Waves perhaps and kisses. Okay, thank you.